So I decided to pick up one of these very cheap battery jump packs that are supposed to be able to start your car. And I thought I'd do a quick review on it. This one is supposed to be good to a starting current of 200 amps. It has a 15 volt 1 amp input in the charging plug here. It also comes with the adapter for a cigarette lighter in a car. There is no circuitry built into this besides the LED. So whatever voltage your battery is at when you plug it in is what gets fed to this. So a lot of the times if your car isn't running, it's actually not going to charge this. But it does seem to work pretty well with a running car. It comes with the USB cable that goes in and just charges your phone. When you turn it on, it's got the indicator lights to tell you that it's full. And if you hold it, it has a flashlight and then a blinking strobe light. Also comes with the whole carrying case to put everything in. I got this off of Amazon on a deal for $36. So, my main interest was to see how much starting current it could actually provide, being rated at 200 amps. So my plan is to use this load tester. It is a, rated at a 100 amp load tester. Usually it's closer to 90 once things get under load. Um, and see if this will actually hold a useful voltage at 100 amps. If it does, I might look and see if I can find a larger load tester. I don't have one that goes over 100 amps. But first, we want to look at the actual plug and what it does inside this. So if we take and we measure the voltage with the unit off in this plug, Hit it backwards there. We can see it's showing 12.5 volts with the unit actually powered off. So that tells me that more than likely this plug is just a direct connection to the battery. And if we look at this harness that they provide, the ground side. It's basically a straight shot through directly to the battery, but the positive side blocks the current one direction. I'm assuming that they put this in there so that that way it will actually make it harder to hook this up backwards and damage the unit or your vehicle in case you don't know which one is positive or negative. My guess is that being cheap it's probably just got some diodes in here and we're going to see a decent voltage drop from this harness all in itself. But to test this I'm going to take their provided harness and connect it to ah, you like helping don't you the load tester Then we're going to take one of our multimeters and measure the voltage right off the clamps.
and we're going to take a current shunt, or excuse me, an amp clamp, and I'm going to hook that on to one of these so that we can get an idea of how much current we're actually drawing from the battery with this given load tester. We zero out the current clamp. I'm going to connect up the unit. I'm going to power it on even though I don't believe it's going to make any difference. We'll shut the lights off so that it's easier to see. And I'm going to just hit it for a four second load. One, two, three, four. You can see we are down to 12.2, 12.3 volt it's recovering. And if we want to get an idea of how low the voltage drops or what our maximum amperage is at this point, we're going to turn on the min-max functions. And I'm going to do it one more time for three seconds. One, two, three. Now it's a little bit hard to see. But we got 9.5 volts was the lowest the voltage dropped, and that was at 78 amps. And that was on the second time I did that. So it's safe to say that you would easily be able to start a car if it required less than 80 amps on this. I'm going to have to get a bigger load tester. I would say that if the voltage drops much below 9 volts, it starts becoming a little bit useless in that the vehicle might struggle to keep turning over even after it's started. I'm guessing that this isn't going to make its 200 rating. Uh, if it's down to 9.5 volts after only a 78 amp load. But if I anyone has any interest in seeing a higher load test, leave a comment below and I'll go pick up a larger load tester and see what it can actually all handle. The other thing is I don't have too much heat, a little bit of heat on the cables which is to be expected, it's only meant for short bursts like that and they're 10 gauge wire. Hopefully you found this interesting and enjoyed. If you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and thanks for watching.